Hello and welcome to another edition of the Tired Pod. We're back and we're more tired than ever. Chez, how are you doing? Man, you beat me to it. I'm really tired. <laughs> I am too. I am too. Uh, you know, we're back a couple of days after the race in the 305. You, my friend, have picked the right shirt for the occasion too. Look at that. Look at you, man. Getting on with it. We may be tired here, but we are on point with our shirt game for Man, sure. This, this should have been a special livery they had this this weekend, except they couldn't because because Williams are sponsored by golf now, right? Ugh. That's true. That's true. Well, anyway, I mean, look, you're, you're celebrating. I can clearly tell that. And uh, this was one heck of a weekend. I mean, I almost forgot there was a sprint race in the midst of what was a very exciting race as well. It feels like it happened years ago, but... Uh, I know we have a lot to get to, uh, and so let's dig in, shall we? All right, let's start at the obvious place, right, which is <clears throat> Lando Norris winning his first race, that proverbial monkey is off his back, if there was one. I, I actually didn't, I, I want to say this, and I'll go to you for your, your uh, take on this, but I wasn't quite aware that Lando was getting so much hate in social media and, and elsewhere about not getting a win. I guess I was just naive and ignorant but that's that's something huh yeah i, I mean i have to say I, I, I don't i don't follow lando on on insta sorry but uh, it turns out he's been liking all of the detractors to his uh instagram account anyone that says lando no wins he's been liking their comments i love that right, good on him and he's definitely proven them wrong but but we i think have also said something along those lines but but not not in that he couldn't win a race but th just that he needed to get the monkey off his back and i think it was one of those things that it took longer and longer and longer and 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 there were chances that were missed um all half chances nothing nothing that was you know solid other than that sort of Sochi 2021 um race yeah. but i always had the the feeling that if if lando got a win that potentially that would be the floodgates opening and he just he just sort of flourish a bit more and on this weekend there seemed to be a bit of a change like there seemed to be a real real belief especially after how he performed in sq1 and sq2 mm. that you know what we might we might have a car to do it and then he and then he absolutely made the best of it on sunday yeah i think uh, it, it's such an interesting time i've been having this uh, this debate with a couple of family members that have said well i don't really want to watch the, the races this year because we know that max is going to win and i think this weekend kind of proved that and i think lando was so on it from the get-go and i think we also need to by extension give mclaren a lot of credit because it looks like every upgrade they brought worked right and they brought a whole host of upgrades and they all seem to have added up to this place where you know a couple races ago we would have thought that mm, geez and max is going to be uncatchable but yeah. this weekend in, in many ways just proved just the exact opposite which is once you get red bull out of that 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 uh, sweet spot window that they work with and that's there and then Lando sort of been on there too I couldn't be more than happy for him and I think one of my best parts of the weekend was to see all the drivers reacting to his win going up and congratulating him I mean I, I think I saw almost every driver in some way go personally and congratulate him and uh, that was a pretty cool moment it just felt like uh, something that needed to have happened races ago but finally did and uh, to just see that was was amazing all around. Really was. You know what my my favorite image of the weekend was though. It was when he comes into Park Fermi and he sees Andrea Stella and Andrea Stella just standing there, like you know, like the <laughs> expectant, congratulating parent. You know, you know. And, and for me, yeah. that that actually drove the whole thing home because I think that this win belongs to two guys, right? They it belongs to Lando for for being the guy that's been consistently at the front in that McLaren team. Um, you know, he, he, despite not winning races and despite the criticism he's come in for, has beaten the likes of Daniel Ricciardo, has shown a clean pair of heels so far to, to, to a, a, a driver that has had probably the best junior CV I think I've, I've seen in the last 20 years. But alongside that, Stella, who I think is one of the most understated guys in the paddock, like he doesn't shout or scream, make clickbaity comments. He he just gets his head down, explains things really carefully, and has created a structure at McLaren that when we talked about it at the beginning of the season, we thought had the potential to rival the structure that Red Bull have, where if you can't replicate the fact that you've got one guy that knows everything and can bring everything from every department then make your structure 
allow for the fact that different people have different specialist interests and use all of them together as a brains trust. That's what he's created at McLaren. And now the fruits of that are starting to get harvested. It's brilliant. I love it. I'm, I cannot and, be happier for, for both of those guys. And it couldn't happen on a be better weekend, right? Where we heard the exit of Adrian Newey, Newey get confirmed. And you can see that these are two organizations that and two outfits that are sort of going in the opposite direction. Although I wouldn't count Red Bull out completely just yet, but um it's kind of amazing to see that that sort of pay uh that that structure and all of that pay pay uh fruit and in this year as well and i was think back to last year right mclaren were both the mclarens were out at the end of s not SQ. we didn't have sprint right but quality one i think they were out in that in that first leg itself so um i thought that was amazing i, I heard a lot of people and there was a lot of chat on social media about how lando got lucky and Oh, I don't know that I buy wow. into that, right? Yeah, I don't. Mate, can, I don't buy we, into that. Can I mean, we, I mean look, can we definitely get into I, this because this is this, yeah. This let's is take into it. Silliest I mean, narrative I've heard all weekend. Although I will say, I had had Carlos waited a couple laps ago. That might have been a different thing. Uh, but you know, again, uh, speaking of luck, there, I, I had to sneak that in there. Look, yeah, I, I, I mean, look, I think there was luck involved in him being where he was at. Um, after the safety car period, I, th there's something to be questioned about where the safety car sort of picked up the the pack as well. I mean, it, it was kind of odd that it took as long as it did, and it just that's the usual FIA stuff, right? But okay, <laughs> <laughs> let's. So whatever it is, look, e even if he did gain advantage uh, and he got a little bit lucky in that, it was fairly clear that he was gonna he was gonna win the race. I mean, Max had plenty of opportunities to 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 come back and get get him and that that didn't quite happen in fact he he pulled out a, a max sort of lead on been doing to max what he's been doing to everyone else so i don't buy into that one second what do you have to say i i think the safety car was pretty essential i, I think he would have struggled to win the race without the safety sure. car only because you could see from other other drivers trying to overtake Mm -hmm. And Lando himself being stuck behind Checo for most of the first stint, they're actually overtaking here. Even if he had the pace in yeah. the car, wasn't right. uh, a slam dunk. So I think had he not had track position after uh, you know after the the first round of pit stops, I think he still would have struggled. I think he would have been hounding Max, and it would have been a super exciting finish. But I think Max right. probably would have just about had it. But that would have done Lando a disservice because he was by far the quickest over the, the of all the leading drivers over the course of the race in terms of his race pace. Now, I think a lot of people are going to come back at me and say, well, Oscar was faster than, than Lando uh, in the first stint. What it doesn't take into account is that in that first stint, Lando ended up falling back down the order and he was what six or seven and he was mm -hmm. sitting behind Checo for the entire first stint and he was within within DRS the whole first stint and as soon as Checo pitted he was like a second and a half quicker per lap than he was when he was when he was sitting behind Perez I mean that is unbelievable pace yeah. on the medium tires yeah. then he got the safety car luck you know the, the fact that he was able to extend his stint Correct. That's um, what at that at that pace allowed him to get into that window where the safety car could benefit him something that the other drivers couldn't do because they were trying to protect themselves from undercut threat behind uh, and no one was quite sure that their pace was enough and it probably wasn't for most of them but lando's was and extending his stint allowed this allowed him to benefit from the safety car so when he then came out and had track position whatever we're going to say about the safety car procedure he then was able to show the kind of pace that he had on the hards. He was quicker than anyone and getting further and further and further away from Max. As you say, he was gapping him in a the Stappen-esque way. And I yeah. think at that point, there was no way that Max was going to get yeah. back in. Max said as much too, right? And and I and uh, look, it takes a lot to get a race win, right? And we know the margins are so so thin. So uh, is there an element of luck involved? Sure, there is. Yeah, I mean, Carlos Sainz won a race earlier this exactly. year, and yeah, I mean, I mean that was there, a little bit of luck involved. But but you know, I mean, if you look at the top eight cars right i mean i'm gonna say yeah i mean the top eight they are not there's not a whole lot separating them and um you know for the longest time he said well you put max away and then the other seven right but uh, you still got to earn it like it's not it's not a given and i again i thought that yes did did, did a little bit of luck play a role yeah i mean if i had carlos waited a couple laps then him and lando could have both been fighting for for the win at that point and 
um, that could have looked like a different podium altogether. I'm not sure that Ferrari had the pace this week uh, to kind of keep up with what McLaren brought, especially with all the upgrades. I think that certainly could have could have been a different thing, or at least that podium would have looked different. I think sure. I think science science probably wouldn't have been able to pit any later than he did just because of the the fight that he was having with with Piastri. Like they they clearly exactly. wanted to get ahead of yeah. Oscar, yeah. who drove an unbelievable first stint, right? To keep within two or three seconds of Max Verstappen with half the upgrades on his car that, that Lando had, man, that was sh- nothing short of spectacular. Like I I genuinely thought he was in, in win contention or podium contention at least at yeah. the beginning of that race. Luck did not Luck. did not uh, shine on him. And I guess we're going to come to that in a minute. But, but Oscar was, Oscar, I think, was was un, un, no, unlucky. Think... And, and some of the incidents that he ended up being involved, well, the incident that he ended up being involved in, um, you know, really, really hurt him. Yeah, I mean, and I would say that just as a preview to how I feel about this, he was also partly, at, in my opinion, at, at he played his, his own sort of, he played a role in his own demise to a certain extent. Um, we can get into that later, but I also just kind of want to quickly look at all the little, little things that happened, right? Because yes, Lando got the win and fully deserved everything, oh, nothing amazing. to take away from him. I mean, but you think about the, the start of the race and there, there could have been one, two Red Bulls and two Ferraris r- out right at the beginning. I mean, Checo came in so hard. He was going to wipe everyone out. Like, he was going to take all four cars out with himself. Like, yeah, yeah but, crazy. I mean, everyone lo- loves to play 10-pin bowling at the beginning of a Formula One race, don't they? But, <laughs> but, but I have to say, just like in Melbourne, look, I I was pretty upset in Melbourne that, that Max retired because I thought that actually science probably still had the pace to win that race and it just would have been super exciting to watch that happen. And similarly here, I would have been really annoyed if Max had been put out at the beginning of the race because then we wouldn't have seen... But what, well, but- what I need to see is not just Max um, being beaten because he's out of the race i need to see him beaten on pace in a race and that is what mclaren were able to show today that's why we have a little bit of hope that perhaps this season isn't going to be the washout that it was last year yeah because there is there are teams out there that, that understand this rule set and understand how to get the best out of their car. I mean, I, I did think that what Checo did there also compromised the Ferraris a little bit because I, I think that they would probably have been able to have, you know, helped. Oh, Leclerc them. got very lucky, didn't he? Leclerc he got very got... lucky. And, yeah, and yeah, yeah. I think in, in the process, he screwed Science as race to it. That's how Science ended up losing that spot to Oscar too because in, in the whole melee <laughs> and trying to avoid, I mean, it just, and look, again, I'm taking nothing away from the McLaren drivers and clearly they, they, they did everything right. Um, and fortune favors the brave, obviously. Uh, so that's that's kind of how it was. But I thought that was pretty I, interesting. I, I think I have to ask you: do 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 you think that you know, as as Carlos Sainz's um, number one, I become fan, a spokesperson now? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the, 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 you know, Omar is now the Spanish minister of <laughs> Spanish. Of, of smooth operating. Um, <laughs> smooth. <laughs> do do you, do you think that Ferrari should have? Let yes, him they should have. Through. They should have. It was very clear at the beginning, and I think that that's why they ended up having Carlos stay back, right? Or he pulled back a little bit and then changed strategies, right? And I, I always one of the things that, good God, how many plans is Ferrari making? Like, good God, like Plan A, Plan B, Plan C, Plan D. Like, just, just forget it. Everybody knows you're going to go long. Like, just go ahead and say that because I'm waiting for one of these races where. Someone says Plan D, and then the other person thinks, well, Plan D is the exact opposite of what Plan D was decided before. Like, good God, stop it with that. But um, they should have done that right away. It was clear that Leclerc was struggling, and I think they compromised Carlos's race, and they could have gone split strategy at that moment. Had they let Carlos by, he could have gone after Max at that point, um, and then Leclerc could have hung back. I mean, in the end, I think it was okay, but I just... (laughs) They, they think, missed. They missed an opportunity I, there. I, I think Leclerc was managing like fairly, fairly early on. I don't. I have to say, when I when I watched it, I wasn't particularly upset that they didn't let him through, just because Carlos wasn't ever particularly attacking him to the point where he could actually get past. He was always at the tail end of that DRS distance, um, and actually Leclerc's pace on hards in the second stint after the, after the safety yeah. car was pretty yeah, solid, fine. man. Yeah, like no, okay. no, it was pretty. Okay. So was Carlos, though. I mean, so was Carlos. I mean, it really was. If he's not in that fight with Oscar, but he, right? But that was a problem. But that's exactly the problem, right? Is 
the, the reason for letting Carlos through at that point was that he would be able to overtake Oscar. But actually, when he was behind Oscar and had to overtake him, he struggled, in fact, getting a penalty. So so, so that that's why I'm like, well, if he'd let him through, would the same thing have just happened? And it would have just been I don't know. the other I mean, Ferrari the driver. Car, yeah. Yeah. Would have just been the other Ferrari driver uh, chasing Oscar. And, and actually, you know, the way it played out, Leclerc going a bit longer meant that Oh, sorry, Leclerc getting the undercut and giving himself track position actually allowed him to unleash the pace that he had in the car and and bring home a pretty solid, unperturbed podium position. I, I didn't have a problem with yeah. that, really. No, I, I think it's fine. I mean, I don't necessarily believe that I had a problem with it. I, I just would like for us to be a little bit more quick in making those decisions because... I hate that we let laps go by. Like it felt like maybe it was shorter than I'm thinking it is, but like if you're going to split strategies, like have Carlos pull back and he should have gone long and expected that safety car because had that happened, that would have again looked like a different race altogether. And again, again, kind of feel like we're in a little bit of the no man's land kind of thing. Like make a decision. If you're going to be wrong, that's okay, but just make a decision. So the indecision part bothered me a little bit, but oh well. I mean, well, I, mean the I, think day, they, I think they made a decision. It's just you obviously didn't like it. No, I don't think they did. I mean, they just like, we are checking. Uh, okay, like, all right. No, I, I didn't just, hear that once this <laughs> race. I, I heard, I heard. I mean, I, look, it felt that way, right? <laughs> I, think, I think I think, that both Carlos and Charles got her talking after China, <clears> too. And that's probably why you didn't see Carlos being as aggressive, because clearly he was too aggressive last race. And so was Charles. I mean, they, they were both at fault at different points. Is, I, I, okay, well, this is a good segue into our next little segment about stewarding and uh, racing incidents, right? But, I, yeah. but listen, I... I'm going to put it out there. I think science got very hot-headed this race again. Again yeah. with you and you and oh god! Like, right. like number one, there was no reason to get that angry about about the the the, the move into turn twelve, right? The, like, okay, he got pushed off the road, but actually, you're the car on the outside, man. That's what's going to happen. And, you know, we can talk about what the racing rules and stuff are. And I think we will in a second. But that was never going to get a penalty. And sitting there driving with a with a, with 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 anger, Martin Brundle always says, never drive angry. And that's what that's what Carlos was doing after that. And, and I think that that played directly into the move that he tried to pull on Oscar into the into the final proper corner. Because that wouldn't have happened. That would, that late lunge and the locking wouldn't have happened if he'd just been calmer about it. And he just ruined why, both their Why races. did they give him only a five-second penalty then? Uh, as opposed to... Why isn't it a 10-second? You, you, so you're, 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 quib you're quibbling about how yeah, much Yeah, my quibbling... Yes, exactly. And there's a reason for that. And that is the, the damn inconsist inconsistency of... I can't even say my word. It's not being consistent. That's the issue it wasn't as egregious as it looks. I think, again, we're playing the result where because Oscar had a broken front wing, it just felt like we had to give him something. It just, it, I'm just telling you how it feels. I, I mean, I know this is not always scientific and objective, but it's starting to feel like that over and over again because in the sprint on Saturday, Lewis effectively took out two Astons. And I know it's the first slap. It's, you know, I get it. But that was... That was pretty over the line. And there was not even an investigation about it, let alone a penalty. And then I don't I don't understand, like, why is it so inconsistent? I, I cannot. And it shouldn't be. I know there are rules, there are standards and all that, but it should be one where we as the audience can see something and be able to at least 80% of us be on the same page. Sure, we can't but, always have consensus. Sure, but, but okay, so, they're, so they're, we're getting into the realms of what about isn't here, right? Because, mm -hmm. yes, you can argue that Lewis should have been investigated, but then Lance should have been investigated too for turning in on sure. his teammate. Neither of those yes. things, neither of those okay, things happened. But, but none but, of that, Amar, changes the fact that science should have got a penalty for the move that he pulled on, on Oscar. Like, no, because but, no, but it, it does those, change. Both of those should it does change because you said no, but you set the precedent by not investigating that. Therefore, you cannot turn around next day and start to give a penalty. That's what but I'm their saying. argument was that it was in the in the first corner, right? Oh, come that, on. That's what. That's why. That's why they. That's why they did it. The first and corner, you can do anything you want. First so corner, Checo had taken out the, the two Ferraris. Then what? What would we be doing at that point? You'd only get a five second or a ten second, right? But taking I mean, out all the Ferraris, the, two, the Ferraris in the first turn, which he effectively just did. I mean, yeah, but he, okay, but he, but in the same way as as Lance Stroll and Lewis Hamilton did no not get investigated, then. Perez also didn't get an investigation because he didn't take out anyone. But it's not about consequence. 
it's about intent, isn't it? So if you come into a corner hot and uncontrolled, then you should get a penalty. It shouldn't be about the consequence. Then why did he get a penalty? Why did who get a penalty? Why didn't Checo get a penalty? He clearly well, came in hot and uncontrolled. Why? Because so was, even the race because, itself, you know, so I don't the look, look. I don't disagree with you, but their argument was that it's the, it's the opening lap, and everyone gets a bit uh, a bit more leeway. But I agree that Lewis definitely came in uncontrolled into that first corner. He in the sprint, he was essentially using the cars on the outside of him to slow his car down. And that's what triggered that little, uh, that knock into Fernando. But Fernando was all, all already in a, in the middle of a sandwich because his teammate had turned in on him. So, so where do you draw the line between those two causing an incident? Checo similarly went in completely uncontrolled, Oof. locking up and ending up in the runoff. So yeah, by rights, that should have been investigated. But, but, I, but when there wasn't a consequence to it but there also wasn't it was also the opening lap that was never going to be investigated because they sorted it out themselves the carlos incident against oscar into the final corner look that had to be looked at especially when when all of the kevin magnuson incidents were looked at and we'll have to talk about kevin in a second because the the the, the, the stewarding options in that was were interesting but in that in the carlos Piastri incident. So, so the race have just put out um, a, an article about some the, the the new racing rules for 2024, which are meant to make things a bit clearer for the stewards and make things a bit more consistent. And apparently, this is what they've been using over the course of this season before the rules get enshrined in the in the international sport, sporting code next year. But just have a little, a little listen to to what you need to do. Um, to 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 not get a penalty um when passing on the inside right so what they've said is that the um you have to have a, the front axle at least alongside the front axle of the other car at the apex of the corner and to the exit so carlos probably fulfills that you need to be able to make the corner within the track limits which again i think carlos did but it needs to be driven in a safe and controlled manner throughout the maneuver entry apex and exit he 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 didn't do that. He locked up his rear, had an oversteer moment, and that specific moment knocked his rear end into Oscar's front wing and broke it. So you had uncontrolled and you had consequence. That was going to be a penalty. I thought that in real time, and that's what happened afterwards as well. I I knew he was driving with a you know with that hanging over his head. You were doing psychology as he was driving too. <laughs> and I think five five seconds is not an unreasonable <clears throat> amount because, as you say, it wasn't yeah, a, maybe a, an it egregious is. move. Um, it was. It was. Yes, it was a bit of a lunge, but it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't like overly optimistic. But he did. Un, he did have an uncontrolled moment, and he did knock the rear of his car. Should only be a one second penalty. That's it. There's no such thing should as a one be. second penalty. My should friend. be. It should be. Uh, no, I, I'm with you. I don't know since when I became Carlos Sainz's Minister of Defense. Uh, I don't know when, but uh, my my beef really isn't with that. My beef is just the inconsistency of it throughout the weekend. Like, as a lot of like at times, it feels like they're looking at the consequence of things, and and then a lot of times they're not. And I I just don't get. It. I mean, I I also don't agree that um, if it's the first lap that we should just allow people to to just kind of get go crazy and take anyone out because. In the Checo Paris thing, the only thing that that changes whether a decision is made or it's not is whether he takes it. That's yeah. it. So you can't yeah. say it's the first first lap and then say, "Well, no," because there was no consequence. Like, it, it can't work both ways. Either the consequences are not. And oh, by the way, just because there wasn't any damage doesn't mean that there wasn't consequence because the two Ferraris got passed, right? They did. But, uh, yeah, but, but, but actually, move. like the consequence thing is consistent because there were consequences the day before in the sprint, and again that. That whole incident wasn't investigated. So, so actually, if you're going to argue about it, they were consistent. No, you know, consequences. They were no consistently consequences. Incident. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's favorite. I mean, it's just. Well, no, it, it, it was actually just to, to look at another incident because the one that I think was probably the more the MVP. interesting one to look at was was science on the outside of Piastri, where science was uh, pushed off the track. Uh, and yeah. then complained about it and was being that this is what we've referenced earlier and then was hot headed about it and got angry. So what do you think? Do you think that Piastri deserved a penalty? He should have given the, no, he should have given the position. Okay. Tell so, me why. That's exactly why he pushed him off the track. That's it. Simple as that. It doesn't so, have to be that complicated. Yeah, but it is as always. Right. And, but, but why? Why? Why should we make everything complicated? Because you OK, because it's exactly this. You see it as he should have had to give it back. I see it as 
the same way that McLaren saw it, which is that that actually that was a fair move. That was Carlos trying to go around the outside of a corner, and and you know ultimately when you hang it around the outside of a corner, you're always at risk of being run out of road, and that is exactly what happened. He got run out of road. This isn't just me when you have you when you have someone someone saying oh he got pushed off and you have another person saying well he should have expected that to happen so there shouldn't be a penalty you've got two differing views and the stewards have to come to an agreement where they take all partiality out of it and go it doesn't matter what you think it doesn't matter what you think these are the rules and there are rules for it do you want to hear them why not yes <laughs> rules help organize the fun that's the quote isn't it here we go so the guides for overtake for the outside you have to have the out the overtaking car has to have their front axle at least alongside the mirror of the other car no later than the apex of the corner that didn't happen uh, be driven in a safe and controlled manner throughout the maneuver yes without deliberately forcing the other car off the track at the exit right so this is the, the car being overtaken has to provide enough, can't deliberately force the car off the track, which includes leaving a fair and acceptable width for the car being overtaken from the apex to the exit of the corner. But you have to have been alongside in the first place and be able to make the corner within the track limits. Did that. So Piastri kind of fulfills all of the requirements for, for not having to concede or give room to the overtaking car. So that's why I didn't get that's why I didn't have to get the Look, place back. You, you can hit me up with each and every rule, but when you're watching it and two of us cannot agree, then there, to me there's something wrong. That's just but, a, but, but, no, that's, that's not, that, no, 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 no. That's definitely not true, Omar, because like how many times do people look at the same incident and depending on their their biases, depending on how they view races, their their previous I am not the one wearing a McLaren get, shirt. I'm not, it doesn't yeah, but you are wearing a Ferrari cap, aren't you? So, so that <laughs> I mean clearly, he's gone like so that clearly years. tells you that like you can <laughs> two people can look at the same incident and have two different views. But the stewards cannot. They have to have one view because we're always going to argue about this. Having two different views is just normal. Mm -hmm. All right, then what about K Mag? Then uh, he is, in my mind, the MVP of the race. I mean, he's the one that caused the safety car. I feel like Lando owes him uh, owes him a, a party. Um, he probably has already. But beyond that, I, I I don't know how many penalties he's accrued. I have no idea. I have well, no K Mag idea. spent the whole weekend trying to help other drivers, didn't he? So it's <laughs> um, so, so it's not um, it's not unreasonable to think that he was uh, just being um, charitable. Um, but yeah, K-Mag was just being silly. And all of the rules and regulations that, that we've just talked about in terms of overtaking, he he crossed the line on all of them. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I mean, to the point where in the presser for, for the sprint race, he was like, yeah, I, I deserved every penalty. Yeah, but I had to do it. No, you didn't, K-Mag. You did not have to do that. You know, and, and in fact... If the if the penalty for doing for having multiple infringements like that was harsher, i.e., a race ban, would he still have done the same thing? Yes. So it's at this point that I do agree with with what you're saying that that the stewards need to have a bit more in their locker. Now, somebody said to me um, after the race that you know they're still allowed to dole out a a drive through penalty, but that wouldn't have been enough in the sprint race really to have caused K Mag um, a, a, a big problem um, and certainly wouldn't have helped the drivers behind him my what i'm really annoyed about is the fact that k mag went off the road tried to essentially torpedo lewis hamilton into um, you know on the exit got a massive penalty probably got a 10 second penalty within a, a couple of laps of that but was still in front we're still in front to to again have another ridiculous move push him off the track when he was trying to go around the outside of him again getting another penalty so he got two penalties against the same driver who was coming at him from behind. And yet at no point did the stewards say, no, 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 enough is enough. You have to cede position. Why are the stewards not allowed to do that? Uh, you know how we've talked about uh, Formula One not changing the rules all of a sudden in the middle of the season to like hold one team back? This is the exact opposite of that, which is if a driver is saying that he's doing things on purpose and the team seems to endorse it, and that is a bigger problem than anything else, right? Because he clearly said that I haven't heard anything from Haas. Maybe they did say something in pa passing, but it seems like this is a team endorsed move too, right? It it clearly isn't one I've heard any radio, anything that says anything otherwise. And 
Haas seems to be enjoying this. And frankly, I'm a little bit embarrassed uh, that that that's kind of what the sport is allowing for it to do. And I don't know what the what the maneuvers are that can be put into place. I mean, in in one way, I could have just seen them keep just doubling the penalties as it comes and then automatically get him to a point where he's black flagged out of the race. Like what's stopping them from adding a penalty on top of another penalty? So maybe just penalize him twice for the same thing. I don't know, because if he's clearly doing that, um, then then that's not good. And I mean, again, what he did in the race was completely unacceptable. I mean, that was that could have been that could have been really, really bad. And again, don't take my or your word for it. Just listen to the drivers in the cool down room like Lando and Max and and Charles. Go ahead and like I think one of them said, I mean, what was he doing? Like, that's exactly that's not fun. I mean, I get but it being aggressive. Exactly. Car but, is, is basically a car as a weapon, right? Yeah. And that's not, this is meant to be a non-contact sport. But but came back clearly, for whatever reason, even if it's not, he said, oh, it's not how I want to go racing. Well, just don't but go racing are. like that then. Yeah. And you he's done I mean? that and, again. And exactly. He did it in Saudi. He's done it again now. And I'm like you, I feel embarrassed for the sport when we see that, when we see the same driver being pursued by the same driver and on three occasions performing an illegal maneuver that he gets a penalty for and not being told to give up that position it's just it's, it just looks so silly bring him it, into it, the pits make him do a drive through or a drive through stop do or something or but that but yeah. that but, but but just letting them carry on racing under let them race well you, you you're already not doing that yeah. by giving out the penalties you you you're telling us you're telling the driver that what he's doing is not right. Either back off, or you get, or or we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna give you a bigger sanction. And they really should have done that. I mean, okay, they could have. I don't know if they have it at their um, at their disposal or not. But I think maybe a simple solution to this is take away Haas's points, and that's just it. That probably will take care of it because clearly they're trying to do everything they can to get up in the constructors by grabbing a point or two here and there. And I'm with you. It's just, I mean, it's. <clears throat> It's just not fun. I mean, look, Lando yeah, won the race, and that's great. But if we, if most of us aren't taking a deeper dive into why that happened, we're talking about he got lucky and all of that. But the reality is that move should have never happened. Like that was blatantly bad. Like there was no way he was going to overtake Sergeant on it yeah, on that turn. I mean, then that was that could have been catastrophic, actually, in many ways. Yeah. It, that it didn't end up being that is just just that we're lucky. Yeah, so. I, I agree. And it's not often I will defend Logan Sergeant, but that that was just. That was poor form on K-Mag's part. And in Logan's home race, you know, literally his home race, I think that was just, yeah, yeah it was what unnecessary, completely yeah. unnecessary. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't get it. All right. All right. Well, uh, I want to move on to this topic, which is my sort of big picture takeaway from this. And I want to kind of get your thoughts on it, which is it does seem like Red Bull is beatable after all. I mean, it's not just going to take a mechanical failure to, to get Max out of the race, right? It does seem like... Uh, that they can be put into a window where things things get a little bit uncomfortable. And I want to, I want to point out a couple of things. I mean, there's there's going to be the obvious of looking at car damage and, and all of that. But I'm very much into reading body language and signs. And I think that one thing is pretty clear. The second Red Bull started walking away or distancing themselves from Adrian Newey, things are seemingly going bad in more ways than one. There's structural changes and Yes, you can put a positive spin to it and you can say that Adrian was never kind of sort of involved, but there is something called bad karma and bad juju. So that's one thing. And I know that's not a very objective opinion. I think what was interesting to me is to see Max's body language. Like, for one, he seemed very cool about not being able to win, where we have seen him rant and complain in ways that we have not, uh, you know, before. Like, it was just crazy that like, he seemed so chill with it. I mean, he even took it a step further and trying to make some some jokes, some I'd say some distasteful jokes, but whatever. Okay, fine, fair enough. But it's just very interesting to to read his body language. And there's a part of me, I'm going to make this big prediction out there, this reckless prediction that I think he's seeing himself out of the team, maybe sooner than later. But I think that's happening because I've never seen Max that way. And I know you can argue that, look, he's won championships now, so he's a different driver, more grown up, more mature, all of the above. You just don't see that kind of behavior from Max. I mean, the guy who will go back and do racing in the simulator right after race day, like, ah, it's, he just seemed very casual. But I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, I think he, he, I think he must have expected something like this was going to happen this this weekend because 
every single segment of the the weekend even when he was getting pole for the sprint when he was winning the sprint and getting and then getting pole for for the race proper there was always the i'm surprised this has happened and that was the worst lap i've ever put in and I don't understand the car feels awful. And he was saying that throughout the race as well. There's no grip. But normally we hear that. We just think, yeah, yeah, whatever, Max. But this time it actually sounded like it was real. Um, and it, that, that proved to be the case. If you're Newey sitting on the pit wall, right, as they're getting beat, and they clearly know a lot more than what we're seeing happen on track, right? They clearly know what's what's coming ahead. And this looked like a weekend where, you know, they... I mean, look, if Ferraris are do a little bit better on strategy, Max doesn't even make it on the podium. It could have been just that close. I mean, many things happen in a race, right? But ah, oh, good God! Like, and, and then okay, so, so then let's let's move it forward, right? Because Nui has said that he doesn't see a whole lot of more upgrades that would really sort of take the car to the next level or whatever that means in terms of getting that separation from the rest. In fact, quite the opposite. It feels like there's a bit of a convergence, right? If McLaren can can kind of keep up this form, which is great, isn't it? Chance yeah. they're they're right there. And look, Ferrari hasn't brought any upgrades yet, or any significant upgrades, I should say, which they're bringing to Imola. And even minus the upgrades, they seem to be very competitive, right? So presumably, if those upgrades go even slightly in the right direction, then oh, I mean, this, this I mean, this season is long, right? We're only six races. Yeah, yeah, year, yeah, right? yeah, uh, yeah. I, we, it, it seems. I, I agree with you. It, it seems to have a completely. Well, at least a slightly different flavor to 2022, where where every race win just seemed inevitable. Um, it, it's it still felt like that at the beginning of a weekend, but this this feels different. I think Australia, there was definitely a feeling that 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 science could have been in there even if Max hadn't um, retired, and and this race really showed that other teams can bring it to McLaren. I don't know if McLaren are consistently able to 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 bring it. Um, I think Stella had said something about the fact that they they're probably one big upgrade away from consistently doing what they did at Miami this weekend. But the fact that they were able they were able to do it here at a track where there is a really um, low speed segment, which is normally McLaren's weakness, and mm-hmm. um, that's op- that 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 gives me some hope that maybe for the rest of the season it's not going to be a complete walkover. And that that ceiling, that that sort of glass ceiling that that that, that you reach when there's a law of diminishing returns, despite this massive um, upgrade that that Red Bull have brought this season, suggests that actually maybe they are reaching that, and and other teams do have. A chance to catch them as long as they can understand what it is they need to do yeah and i think again on this weekend i mean we can do the the hypotheticals right but max clearly didn't look like look like he deserved pole in many ways i was a little bit surprised that neither of the ferrari was able to sort of put it on the front row and again it seems like and i don't know this is my takeaway from this race in particular if you have track position and effectively if you're leading the race then you can run a completely different race and yeah. open up gaps like the ones max has been opening up because lando pulled out a seven eight second gap in what a 20 lap race at that point i don't know something a little bit more than that but that was pretty astonishing and so if he can do that presumably the ferraris can do that too because they run better on their tires this year than years before and if you're leading the race then it's a it's a different deal altogether right yeah, that's I, quite I interesting, that. right? I mean, it seems like track position then then really kind of becomes a thing now. But but, but this was it. As, as we said earlier, I think Lando would have struggled to win this race if after the first round of pit stops, he was he, he he was he was behind Max, and and ultimately the reason that he was in the position that he was in in the first place was because he qualified badly, right? <laughs> and but and that was true of a lot of drivers. Yeah. But but I think the McLarens specifically on the soft tire just didn't perform if they, if they had been mandated a soft tire stint in the race they would have been trouble yeah big trouble yeah they would right? have been. so tires become a factor too right so yeah yeah, I mean, yeah interesting yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah i i do i do think there's hope right and then you have i mean i think imola is in play for i, I think anyone it, it's a bit of a toss-up and if ferrari do bring the, the promising package that we've uh, been made to believe then who knows what that looks like and that's a home race too so they're presumably bring keeping, on. bring it on right yeah bring on it um, a couple of uh, random tidbits right the one thing i i absolutely i will keep railing against is the commentary man and sky's got to do a better job of hiding their 
their their sort of uh, fandom right uh, for british drivers i'm just going to say it as is nothing against british people or british drivers let me get that out there please before you guys start coming at me but good god at least can you try to hide it a little bit like come on like i'm just so please tired I, I just like the fanboying nature of it is is crazy although i did hear from a lot of people say that they were that martin and and uh, crafty were were just uh not happy with lewis like i mean they were crazy they they seem to be piling on lewis for some reason in the commentary but i don't know they, I, they did after the after the sprint race, sprint race there, right, there was yeah. there there was a lot of well i'm surprised he didn't get a penalty for skittling everybody into the first corner just as you were and i guess i was as well so that i mean they weren't fanboying then were they they weren't fanboying they were being selective fanboy uh, all of that is to say that i want uh, i want nico rosberg back like i want him back like I, they, can you imagine this race he would have been that it would have been so much fun it would have just been so much more fun listen don't get me wrong have nico for every race i i i i love it uh, i love it um but it was interesting that, that actually um in the um commentary he uh, martin brundle actually argued in absentia with with Nico Rosberg because there was a, I think they were talking about tire warm up on the open on their formation yeah, lab exactly and um, and um, Crofty said something about well we had Nico last week and he said all that Too weaving easy. makes no difference because it just it just heats up the the outside of the t the, the tire but does nothing for the core and Brundle immediately was like yeah but they're doing this speed and therefore yes it actually makes a big difference exactly I love I love that view but but, I mean, but, but, but having but maybe having all three of them will be even better. That would be that great. Would work. Because I, I hated the work, fact but... that in the last few laps, and like Martin Brun was also like, well, let's just not talk about it. Let's talk about something a little bit boring and behind, which is Carlos and, uh, and, you, you and clearly, uh, Oscar. Like, clearly, what is that? What is this? You have clearly people? forgotten Murray Walker's commentary, man. <laughs> like, this okay. was Murray. This is I, Mar Murray this was is the not... guy that Murray Walker was the guy that in 1996 had a lump in his throat because Damon Hill won the the championship if, if if there if there isn't more partisanship than that i don't know what is but i love murray everyone loves murray nobody is I know people about from murray everywhere but but, 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 that, that but is, that's but that is what you're saying right the that was then this is now we're now we're in a new day and age baby we're we're, we're racing in the 305 it, that didn't happen before did it right i mean so come on now that what has that got to do with it like he was he was a new day. against against Jacques Villeneuve that season. Oh. Where, where are all the Canadian fans? In fact, it was a Canadian fan. <coughs> our, our very fan, Double Wave Yellow, that, is... That is, a, is a big fan of Murray Walker. I and, can't... And, 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 and that's what Murray Walker said when Damon beat a Canadian. So Okay. All of that is fair, but I, this is just me saying I want Nico back. That's that's what I want. I want. I, him I'm, back. I'm very, I'm very happy to have Nico back. A true <laughs> racing fan, someone I can get behind. And... Like, like everything he says is gold. It, I, 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 I love the fact that people will say, "Ah, oh, he hates on Lewis," and then in the same sentence, "Ah, oh, he loves Lewis too much." When, when that is happening, you know you've got balance, and I, I, and I think he that. does that very nicely. I want that. I want that. Um, I want that too. My final thing. Shout out to my guy, Freddie Wasser. Like, he is just, oh, man, he's so precious and good God. I can't wait for him to be successful. Did you see what he did at the end of the race, right? Did you see what he did and went over to McLaren and yeah. partook in the, in the I mean, yeah, look, I love that, that was so cool, wasn't it? Yeah, I love it. I love it. All right. Well, next year when when Lewis is winning, I think he's going to go streaking. That's that's sort of my bet. Or or maybe when Charles is winning, he's going to do that this year. Like, oh, mate, uh, I don't want to see that, but... But yeah, he was great. He was great. It's a Fred, Fred, Fred is a breath of fresh air at Ferrari, man. He's 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 great. He's just what you guys needed. Oh, you guys, all of us to our needed. viewers, go back and watch one of our first debates in the wake of the Matteo Benotto de departure and the Fred Russell hiring. Someone, um, yours truly, kind of made those points. I just want to throw it out there. I just want to throw it out there. <laughs> all right, and on that bombshell, thank you for watching. Uh, please like, subscribe, give us a comment. Uh, we read every comment. We respond to as many of these as possible. Uh, let us know if you have any questions. Until then.